Good morning, and welcome to all of you who have gathered here for this second Sunday in October for our worship service. A welcome to all of you who may be visiting with us this morning. We welcome you here and glad that you are here with us. To those who will be joining us later on TV, we extend a welcome to you as well, and we hope you find today's service a uh, meaningful service to you all. We have a lot of things going on in this service and a lot of things going on in the church this week. Um, tomorrow, of course, being the official holiday for Columbus Day, um, the office will be closed. Food pantry will be open Tuesday evening. Trustees meet this Wednesday evening at 7.30. Um, also note that uh, again this year, like we did last year on Halloween on the 31st, we will be having trunk or treat here in the parking lot on the south side of the church on that evening from 5 to 7. And we invite anybody, you don't even have to be members of the church, we invite anybody who'd like to participate in distributing candy to be up here around that time if you'd like to distribute candy. And of course, we welcome anybody from the community, families with children. You are welcome to come and trunk or treat in a safe manner up here in our parking lot, again, from between the hours of 5 and 7 that evening. Um, as we also, the UMW Soup Suppers coming up on the 22nd uh, on that evening, so mark your calendars for that. Also, I don't remember who was sitting here in the front pew last week, but who was somebody who I believe was sitting there left a pair of reading glasses, and they're there in the pew rack on this side. If you know, or was you that left a pair of glasses, they're there in the uh, pew rack here in this very front pew on, on this side closest to the aisle. Are there any announcements that any of you have this morning before we begin? Choir at 5.30 on Wednesday, everyone is welcome to join. Well, today is also Pastor Appreciation Sunday, so we wanted to oh. give Pastor a little something to tell him how much we appreciate oh. having him here at the church, and, and we feel very fortunate for you to be here. Well, thank you, Clay, and thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, too, am very well blessed to be here with, with all of you. I, as some of you know, we had a clergy gathering this last week in Wakini, and I got to meet with Bishop Signs. And in my conversation with Bishop, you know, we, we were talking, and I thanked him for the appointment here. And that, again, I truly believe God puts us right where we belong, and I'm glad to be here. It's not that it's been without its challenges. We've had some very heartbreaking times together, but nevertheless, I'm, I'm blessed to be here with, with all of you as well, and thank you, and thank you for, for this wonderful gift. We also want to welcome the members of the Plum Creek 4-H Club who are with us here this morning. We want to welcome all of them, and uh, they will be sharing with us here in a little bit. We'll call them forward here in just a moment, but are there any other announcements before we begin? If not, then I would, um, would invite the, the, the members for the 4-H for, for, for the Club, or they would like to come forward at this time, and uh, they have a, a little presentation, I believe, to do for us. You're just here, okay. Well, then we won't worry. I don't know. There was this tape to my thing, but we won't worry about it then. Sorry about that. I okay. didn't mean to put you on the spot. Well, with that then, welcome to all of you. Let us stand and join in our call to worship. You'll find in the back of your hymnals on page 752, verses 1 through 5 of Psalm 22. Page 752 in the back of your hymnal. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. 
Yet you, the praise of Israel, are enthroned in holiness. To you they cried and were saved. Our hymn of praise is number 117. And one quick word for those of you who are visiting with us this morning in your hymn or in your bulletin, you'll see some of the hymnals that say TFWS. What that means is that means the Faith We Sing songbook, and that is the smaller songbooks you'll find in your your pew racks there. Anytime you see that, that's where the hymn can be found. So the response after our offering, the doxology, is found in that, and then. The hymn we will sing a little later to summons will also be found in that small booklet. So just for something for you to be aware of. At this time, it's great, uh, with great joy, I invite our shared choir to come forward and share with us in music. Good morning. Um, we are missing a few today because of previous commitments, three-day weekend and that type of thing, but I told the kids it didn't matter if we had four or ten or one, we were still going to sing. First off, I would like to thank the parents. I know Wednesday afternoon after school it's just one more thing, but um, I appreciate all of those who come and I know there's days that they can't be here, and that's okay, too. Um, I have them for 45 minutes, 
Some days we practice 45 minutes, some days we practice 30, and some days I get to hear about their day at school, and that's all okay. Um, I feel truly blessed um, to have these kids, and once again, I would like to thank you for sharing them with me. I want to thank Sandy Small for doing the altar for us just for today, and to Mrs. Confer for recording our music. She couldn't be here today. Um, we'd like to ask for some special prayers for her tomorrow. Um, she would be here if she could, but she's here in, in our hearts, so... Okay. And we're not going to be perfect, and we don't want to be. We're going to make mistakes. <laughs> Christopher Columbus, who sailed the ocean blue, you used your compass and a map to find a land so new. Now we celebrate your day to show our gratitude you found your way that fateful day in 
red and white with 13 stripes remind us of our past. The colonies so long ago, some thought they'd never last. And then the stars, although they've changed, for the states, both old and new, on a field of blue, they're 50 strong, a home for me and you. So wave your flag and shout your pride and never let it fall. And remember why we pledge each day with liberty and justice for all. Will you all pl please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Star Spangled Bud.
you see, they have their own speed. Well, I know they just went and sat down, but I'm going to invite all of the children to come forward. <laughs> and we'll have a brief children's message then. Well, welcome to all of you and to all of you who sang. Thank you so much for that gift of music. And even if you didn't sing, just know that you are special. And I'm just glad that all of you are here today. Now, do all of you have a favorite type of candy or candy bar you like? Do you have a favorite type? What are some of your favorite types of candy or candy bars? Kit Kat. Kit Kat? What else? Whoppers? Yes, in the back. No idea? Just raising your hand. Anybody else? Smurfs? What else? Anything else? Kit Kat? Okay, we have another Kit Kat. Snickers? Anybody like Snickers? How about Reese's Peanut Butter Cups? Those are good. Well, I brought a little thing I like. Now, I only found these at Walmart, and they only have them once in a while. But I like them because they're so good. They're, they're called a peanut brittle candy. And what, what, why I like about them is that, that, that they, while there's a little bit of sugar in them, there's not a lot, but they're still good. They're easy to chew because you chew on them. They're not real hard. If you ever had peanut brittle, sometimes peanut brittle can be kind of tough, but this isn't. This it's crunchy, it, it, it tastes good, and I just love these. And I, I get a bag or two anytime I'm in Walmart if they have them. I like them because they are just such a good thing to snack on once in a while. If you're like me and you have kind of what we call a sweet tooth or kind of like sweet things, these are, are, are one of the best things, at least that I've found, that I really like to eat. Now you're wondering, well, what does this have to do with anything? Well, reason why I'm sharing this with you is I'm sharing with you this because I, I like this so much. They're called, it's just called Munch Peanut Brittle Bites is what it's called. But I'm sharing this with you because I am so confident about how good this is that I think if you try one of these, you too will really like how good they are. I am just confident. And you might even say, I'm even bold enough to even share with you to say that I really like these. And I think all of you should have some of these sometime next time you're at Walmart. We all have our favorite kind of candy bars and candies, don't we? We have our favorite types of shoes. Do all of you have a favorite type of shoe you like to wear? Yeah. Boots. boots. You like your boots. Yes. What else? What other kind of shoes? Tennis shoes. Do you have favorite brands of tennis shoes or boots? Yeah. Nike, boots, Ariad, I suppose, and uh, some of the others. Justin, those are some of the different boot makers I know. Well, what else kind of shoes do you like? Sneakers. Sneakers? Yeah. And when you get a pair, you, you want to show them off, don't you? And, and part of the reason why you do that, because you maybe like the way they look and feel, but again, that's the thing that you're saying to others kind of because you're confident so much that you like the shoes that you think others will too. You see, we do that about a lot of things in, 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 in our lives, whether it's shoes, candy we wear, or eat, I mean. But sometimes when it comes to our faith, we're not always so, so confident or willing to share about our faith. In other words, think of what our world would be like today if we were willing to talk about Jesus, much in the same way we're willing to talk about our favorite candy or our favorite type of shoes or boots. 
Can you imagine what that would be like if we were willing to talk about Jesus? The thing is, is we have no reason not to. Because first and foremost, Jesus loves all of us. Jesus loves us no matter who we are, no matter what kind of shoes we may wear or what kind of candy we eat, what we look like, if our hair is dark or light, if we're short or tall, old or young. Jesus loves us all. And because of that, we should go out in a little bit. Now, you'll be at, at Sunday school, most of you will, but in a little while I'm going to read a passage from the book of Hebrews where it talks about going out and with boldness proclaiming who Jesus is. And that's what I hope all of you can do. As you gather and what you learn in Sunday school, what you learn and see and hear as well in church, to help you go out and proclaim with confidence and with boldness, which means that you are sure about Jesus and that when you tell others about who Jesus is, that you're doing so with the confidence and gladness that you know you are loved and that you are helping others know that they are loved. That's what it means, having boldness for Christ is it means going out and being assured of knowing who Jesus is, to know that you yourselves are loved and that Jesus loves others. And when, you, when they say you proclaim Christ, you proclaim Christ by telling others that they're loved. Not only telling, but by showing others through your actions that they're loved. When you go and make new friends on the playground or you go and sit and eat your lunch with somebody who maybe doesn't seem that popular during the lunch hour, those are ways that you're proclaiming who Christ is because you're showing Christ's love. Jesus didn't go to the most popular people he came across. He didn't go to the most wealthy or the people most well-liked. He often went to the people that weren't always popular, maybe weren't always liked. He went to the people who had physical ailments. He went to the people who were ill. He even went to people who from time to time did wrong, that might even have stolen from people, like Zacchaeus, the tax collector. All because Jesus wanted to, the world to know of God's love for everyone. So as you prepare to leave and head to your classrooms this morning, I want you to know that you are loved. And my hope for all of you as you go forward to your classes today, that you can go forward and proclaim the boldness of who Jesus is. Much in the same way you can share and talk about what your favorite shoes are and whatnot, my hope is that you can share and talk about who Jesus is with one another. Will you join with me in a prayer? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for all that you've given us. And thank you for always loving us. Help us to go out with boldness and confidence to proclaim to others who you are. In your name we pray, amen. All right, well, thank you all for coming up again. And as you leave, you can grab a treat as you leave. There's one. There's one. I'll just let you all grab it. There you go. <laughs> Get one. Be enough in there for everybody. There you go. <laughs> you bet, thank you. You bet, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You bet.
we again have been blessed by much, and therefore, as a sign of our thankfulness, let us receive our offering. <laughs> with me in our offertory prayer let us pray god of the cosmos and god of every heartbeat your work touches every corner of creation yet when times are hard we wonder if you've deserted us and we become tight-fisted and fearful that sharing with others will leave us empty-handed as we bring these gifts to your altar Give us the eyes to see and the hearts to know that you never desert us and never send us away in need. In the name of your Son, who came to remind us of your closeness and to give his life so that ours might be eternal. 
Amen. You may be seated. We've come now to a time of sharing our joys and concerns. What joys or concerns do you have this morning? Yes. Wonderful, Vicki. Thank you. And we are glad that you're back safely, but nevertheless, thank you for that. Are there other joys or concerns? We want to uh, congratulate, of course, the, uh, the, the Flemings on the birth of their son, Clay, who was born on the 5th, joins a big sister, Ainsley. So we want to congratulate Drew and Denon on that. We want to remember those um, whose names appear in our prayer list uh, this week, especially for Vernon Riley. Uh, Vernon is Delbert's brother, and he's been in the hospital down in Florida for the last several weeks and uh, is battling some issues dealing with a broken ankle that he sustained several weeks ago. So we certainly lift him up. We continue to pray for Darren, for Barry, and uh, of course for Marie, Ralph, and all others whose names appear there. I will offer each prayer petition by uh, concluding each prayer petition by saying, Lord, in your mercy, and again ask that you respond by saying, hear our prayer. Together, let us approach God in this, our time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you again for all gifts that you have given us. We thank you for your creation, O God, that sustains and provides for us. We thank you for the changing of seasons, for the changing of colors, Lord, and for the cooler temperatures. Lord, we, we thank you for all of these good gifts and blessings you give us. But most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection on the cross that brings us to, to the hope of new life, eternal life in you. Lord, thank you for that and for all of these blessings and gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we have not always, though, done your will. We have turned our backs on one another and on you, and we've ignored the cries of, the, of those in need. We have fallen short of your glory, O oh God, and we've allowed selfish motives to rule our lives. And Lord, we come before you this morning humbly asking for your forgiveness. Forgive us, we pray, and Lord, again, humble our hearts. Help us to know, the Lord, that your knowledge, your wisdom is greater than any one of us, Lord. And help us to know that your mercy and grace is greater than any one of us. Lord, again, forgive us and help us so that we may forgive one another, that we may be born into the new life found in you as promised through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we lift up those who are hospitalized, recovering, who are ill, who just are not feeling well for whatever reason, Lord. We, we lift up all of these folks for Delbert, for Barry, for Darren, for Ralph, for Marie, Louise, Luke, J.W., Joanne, and all others, Lord, who are ill or, or, or just dealing with some health issue. We, we ask you not only to be with them, but be with the doctors and nurses who tend to their care, Lord. Give them healing hands, Lord. Heal and strengthen them all, Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we lift up those again who continue to grieve in the loss of loved ones. Lord, we, we lift whoever they are up to you, O oh Lord. We continue to lift up Foster's family. We, 
We lift up the family of Bruce Ford and others, Lord, who, who are grieving the losses of loved ones. Continue to guide and strengthen them and uphold them in your, your strength, Lord, and in your love and comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we, we continue to pray for the leaders in our community and in our state and country, Lord, as they lead and guide your people. Lord, we just pray that your wisdom may be given to them, that they may follow, O Lord, as they lead your people. Be again with our school boards and administration, faculty and volunteers, and especially our students, Lord, as they continue to meet and gather in classrooms, not just in this community, but throughout the state and country, Lord. We, we pray for them and for their continued well-being and safety as we continue finding a way to emerge from this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the, the men and women and all of the youth who work and, and, and do so much through the 4-H clubs across this country and in this state. And we're, we're thankful for the 4-H clubs in our community and county and for all of the work that they do and for, for the volunteers who guide these, these young men and women, Lord. Thank you for their, their dedication and their hard work. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless them Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we, we lift up and pray for all of those names that may remain yet in our hearts and in our minds. And Lord, we know you, you know the concerns in our hearts and minds. And we just ask again that you would hear and respond to them only in the way that you can. And now, with the confidence as children of God, together let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into chapter 23, verses 1 through 9 and 16 through 17. Then Job answered, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give heed to me. Therefore, an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there, or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left, he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. 
Our first Old Testament reading for this morning is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joint from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace in help in time of need. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, How hard will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. May God bless to our hearts and minds this an understanding of God's holy word. This is the word of the Lord. And you may remain seated as we join in singing our next hymn found in the Faith We Sing songbook number 2130.
Will you please pray for me as I pray for you as we think and reflect upon our scripture passages together. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation in all of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our refuge, a very present help in trouble. Amen. Well, our passage this morning out of Mark presents to us a very interesting story. We have a story, as we are told, of a rich man. We don't know a lot about him, other than that we know he comes to Jesus. He comes to Jesus and he says to him, Lord, what must one do? What must I do to inherit eternal life? What must, I be, what must be done here? And Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? Because he calls him a good teacher. You know, no one is good but God alone. But then Jesus says this to him. He says, you, you, you know you know the commandments, meaning, well, the Ten Commandments. Now, what's interesting is Jesus then only mentions half of the Ten Commandments, and they are the latter half of the Ten Commandments that deal how we as humans interact with one another. And he reminds them, you know, the commandments of you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud and honor your father and mother. The rich man, I can only imagine when Jesus says to him, is probably rather proud and maybe a little bit on the smug side and says to Jesus, well, I have done all of that since my youth. Jesus responds with these words. First, we're told Jesus looking at him, loved him, and said, you lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the man heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. I think this is really the only story, at least that I know of in the gospel, where someone has come to Jesus and has left disappointed, has left saddened. Pretty much all the other, other interactions people have had with Jesus when they'd come up to him, whether it was for, to be healed or something else, to ask him a question, a lot of these folks went away with a sense of joy, with, with a renewed sense of faith and passion for others. Because Jesus often gave these people a word of hope. And this man comes to him thinking that he's done everything that's needed for eternal life, that he's lived a faithful life, he's abided by those Ten Commandments, especially those latter few, and says, well, I've done all those, Lord, and I think he's waiting and expecting that Jesus is going to give him a pat on the back. And that's not what happens. Jesus says, well... You've got to do, well, one thing you haven't done yet, and that's that you have to go sell what you have. And when you have pretty much gotten rid and are down to nothing, then you can come follow me. Now, I know what some of you are probably thinking. You're thinking, oh, no, here comes another sermon on materialism. Well, th this could be, but, but it's, it's, it's not all about just materialism. It's about what it takes to be a disciple of Christ. In the sense that be, being a true disciple, which we are all called to be, it's not just us as pastors. We are all called to be disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That's the official mission statement of the Great Plains Annual Conference here of the United Methodist Church. To become disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world. And to be a true disciple, yes, means sacrifice. This answer that this rich man was hoping for did not come. It sort of reminds me, and I might have shared this story once before. Some of you will remember the sitcom The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons was about an African-American couple by the name of George and Louise Jefferson. 
They lived in this high-rise apartment, and their neighbors would often drop in on them. One of the occasional guests was George's mother. And you can imagine his mother doted on George all the time, but the relationship between her and her daughter-in-law, Louise, was rather strained. And I remember in one scene where the three of them are sitting on the couch together. George is on one side of his mother, and Louise is on the other side of her. And George is apologizing for some reason to his mother, and he's saying, I'm so sorry, Mom. I guess I haven't been the best son to you. And his mother responds by patting him on his leg and says, Oh, George, yes, you have. You've been, you've been a great son. Well, Louise then says the same thing. She says to her, she goes, And Mom, I guess I haven't been the greatest daughter-in-law to you. And I think Louise was probably expecting a similar answer, to which the mother-in-law turns to Louise, does the same thing, pats her on her knee and says, no, but I'm sure you're doing the best you can. You might have been yourself in a situation like that, where you were expecting an answer from someone, a response that you thought you knew how someone would respond, and that's just not how they responded. And that's what this rich man was expecting. In your faith as Christians, you may not be called so much to, to sacrifice in some way as others are. And as pastors, you may not be called to sacrifice, but that, that's still a call there. Now, this, this message, this passage today isn't telling us that we should just all go home and sell everything we have and get rid of everything and live on nothing. But in our discipleship, in our path in following Jesus, there are times where we must be willing to put ourselves last and others first. The only way I can share that myself is through my own faith and my own story. And that, again, of course, is when I began this journey into ordination and the ministry in the United Methodist Church, when I started seminary back in 2014, I remember, you know, wondering about, you know, knowing and becoming a United Methodist pastor. I knew that meant I had to follow and go under what we call the itineracy. In the United Methodist Church, if you're not quite familiar the itineracy means basically through the bishop and the bishop's cabinet, we as pastors are appointed to churches. What that basically means is we have to go to wherever we are appointed. We don't get to make the decision to what church we go to serve. And when we become ordained, we are agreeing to becoming part of that itineracy. And when I started seminary, I honestly didn't know if I could do that. I didn't know if I could handle putting my life, my, my life in someone else's hands to determine where I was going to go live and serve. I honestly didn't know if I could do that. And so I gave a lot of thought to becoming a deacon, which is our other ordained office in United Methodist Church. But what's different about a deacon is that deacons can secure their own appointments. They can kind of go where they want to go and serve, so to speak. They still have to seek the approval of the bishop, but they can kind of choose to go where they want to go. And so for quite a while, I thought about being a deacon as opposed to being an elder, because I just didn't know if I could live under that itineracy. It wasn't probably till the summer of 2017. I quit my job as a dispatch supervisor for a local police department up in northwest Nebraska and pretty much made the decision to live on my savings for the next year to finish getting me through seminary and hopefully get an appointment the next summer in 2018. What I found, as hard as that kind of was to not have a job and really have to watch my money so I didn't use up all my savings, what I found, as hard as that might have been at the time, it was also a blessing. Because in that time, it helped me prepare and it helped me to kind of see the, the itinerary in a little bit of a different light. Because it helped me see that the itinerary, yes, it is about trust, 
And yes, you are putting your life in the hands of someone else. But it's ultimately about trusting in God. And sure enough, later that year in 2018, I received the call for my first appointment to three churches in Nebraska, and that's where I served for two years. And then again in the spring of 2020, a little over a year ago, I get another infamous call that's telling me I'm going to be appointed to yet another church. And when, as a pastor in the Methodist Church, when you get those type of calls, they don't tell you at first where you're going. You usually have a few hours for me, actually it was several days, before you actually get the call to be told where you're getting appointed. So I had to wait a whole weekend, but I finally got the call Monday morning, and the person that called me invited me to come to St. Francis, Kansas. And I admit, I had no idea where St. Francis was at. And so when I got off the phone, I got on Google Maps and I looked through and figured out and got to know everything I could about the community of, of St. Francis and this church. I'd already made my decision that I was coming here. I told the district superintendent that I agreed to come. But we, the, the, the one reason why it was a lot easier than I thought is because I started thinking of it in a way kind of as an adventure. When I got my first appointment, that excitement of just not knowing where I was going, but trusting, trusting God that everything would work out, it did. And I got my first appointment. So I get this second appointment, and I know I'm coming here, and everything's looking good, and I'm getting excited about going. And then all of a sudden, about three weeks later, the pandemic hits. And I cannot tell you the nights, the sleepless nights I had after that wondering how I was safely going to move through a pandemic. I wondered, would I be safe? And would the people here, how would they be? And would they be safe? And how would we even minister together in a pandemic? These were some of the questions that really kept me up. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I had to just trust and believe that God would see me through that I'd have to make yet another sacrifice. I really enjoyed the three churches I was at, but I knew this was part of the adventure and I had to put the trust. And you know, here's the thing. The thing is, is I told Bishop Signs at our gathering this past week, I said, you know, I firmly believe God puts us where we belong. And I believe God sent me here. This is where I belong with you for now. I want to say that all of you have been such a blessing to me in my time here. And that's not to say we haven't been through, again, through some very challenging times. We've had some heartbreaking times together in this community in this last year. But I trust and believe God led us together. And you see, that's as being a disciple, that's some of the sacrifice that we're called to make to put our own needs behind the needs of the others so that the first may be last and the last may be first. No, you aren't expected to necessarily go home and sell all that you have. The thing is to remember about this passage is don't let those material possessions, don't let those things that maybe you're proud of and you have every right to be proud of, I mean... I'll admit, I'm a little proud. I have more or less a brand new pickup truck. It's a new pickup truck, first newest truck I've ever owned. But don't let those things define who you are. Let what defines you, as the writer in Hebrew tells us, what defines you is your willingness to go out and proclaim the boldness of Jesus Christ through your words, but through your actions to one another. Let your love shine through to one another as you embrace that love of Christ who loved us first. And then finally, know this. As Jesus had in his conversation with those disciples, they talk about eternal life, and they talk about, well, how do we really earn it then if we don't do it all of this? And Jesus said, well, here, that's the thing. You don't earn eternal life. 
Because there's nothing you do, can do or not do in your life that will, you will ever be good enough to earn it. There's nothing that you can do to get eternal life. Eternal life, that promise, only comes from God, and it's only possible by God. You are not the one, ultimately, that determines that. And you see, that's the wonderful thing. Because God has loved us from the very beginning. And remember, even in the words of the scripture today, when this rich man was looking at Jesus, and we might kind of want to despise him, but even it says to us that Jesus loved him. I think Jesus saw potential in this rich man to be a true disciple. And I've always wondered what, what the rest of his story was. Did he ever come back? Even though he was initially dis disappointed, we don't know. I'd like to think maybe he did in some way become a disciple. We just don't know. Whatever the case is, is know that the promise of eternal life is made through God himself, through the risen Christ, through Jesus' death and resurrection, that our life is made eternal. Brothers and sisters, may you go forth again being reminded what it means to be a true disciple. Disciple means sometimes, yes, putting others ahead of yourself. And it, yes, means sometimes sacrificing. But when you are willing to do that, the blessings you receive are so much more than anything that you can ever, could ever imagine. I know in so far, in my four short years of ministry so far, I have been blessed beyond measure. And it's all because, partly because of my willingness to follow and follow that itineracy. And I don't say that as, as, as a proud statement. I just say that that's the reality of the faith that we live in. That when we're willing to live those, by those words of Jesus, to allow others to be first, we still find that we are richly blessed. May you go forth and may you be richly blessed in your faith and walk with the risen Christ. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to please stand and let us join in singing our closing hymn number 474. <laughs>